everybody, welcome to this review of the Revel 1959 Cadillac Eldorado convertible model. Now this model I completed myself last year. Um, I, I first made one actually when the kit was first released by Revel back in I think about 1992, 1993, around then. Um, built it, enjoyed it, thought it was great. Couldn't wait to get my hands on another one when I when I got a bit older, so I could uh, uh, just build it again and make it a really really nice looking model because I remembered just how well this kit goes together and how much detail Revel included in it. Um, I, as I recall, it was actually issued by Monogram originally in 125th scale. It now falls under the or when it was released, it fell under the Revel brand. Uh, this particular kit was actually an old, unstarted example of the original monogram kit from back in the 1990s. So, first of all, why did I build this? Well, it's a 1959 Cadillac convertible. There's nothing like it. There really isn't. I mean, just look at it. Secondly, again, having built it years ago, I remember just how well it was done, how nice the kit was. Uh, and I just, to be honest with you, would quite happily make another one of these. So, no unboxing video with this one because I've already made it. Didn't do an un unboxing video before I did it. Um, I do have an unboxing video of the hardtop version of this, which you can watch. About 95% of the parts are the same, to be honest. So let's take a look at this one. First of all, it is sprayed with aerosols. I chose a Vauxhall color, Vauxhall being a General Motors brand uh, known in Europe, certainly in the UK. I forget the name of the colour that I used, but it's uh, some sort of slightly bronze coloured silver. I chose this colour because lots of people who build Cadillac models generally, and in particular this kit, choose pink or turquoise or a sort of stereotypically 1950s colour. Um, I didn't want to do that. I thought well, this, is a, this is a Cadillac Eldorado convertible, top of the range. It's an expensive car. It's going to be bought by people with lots of money and expensive tastes. It'll be bought by film stars, movie producers, music producers, people with money to go and spend on a convertible Cadillac just to keep at their uh, keep at their beach house. And those people have got expensive tastes. And I thought they're not they're not all going to drive a pink car, you know. Some of them are going to want something that just looks a little more understated. Hence the choice. So I went for this because it looks very close to a colour that real 1959 Cadillacs were offered in. Same with the interior, it's not quite right. It's getting close in my eye to the mink, I think it was the mink colour that was offered for interiors in 59 Cadillacs. Not quite right, but to my eye, it goes pretty well with the exterior. So, let's point out some of the details here. First of all, the amount of chrome that comes with the kit, the windshield surround, quarter light surrounds, the enormous front bumper and grille assembly, the similarly impressive tail light, and I suppose there's no other word to say other uh, than rear grille assembly, um, the side spears on the fins, the housings for those tail lights, the rear seat center speaker and trim piece, the wheel trims, wheel discs, hubcaps, all in chrome. Uh, the separate windshield wipers, again, separate chrome pieces. Rear view mirror chrome, driver side mirror chrome, separate door handles chrome. There's plenty of chrome. Also, interestingly, what, uh, what was offered in this kit when Monogram first released it was this sort of self-adhesive chrome foil here, which enables you to replicate the side body mouldings from the real car, which had that chrome or stainless steel appearance to them. It's pretty effective. It's thicker than the bare metal foil that many of us use to recreate chrome on model cars. It was, and it's pre-cut. So it's quite a nice, quite a nice addition to the kit really, because all these pieces are pre-cut and numbered so that they fit into the specific locations on the body. All you do is unpeel them and stick them on. And it actually turns what would be a very, very lengthy and complex 
bare metal foil job into quite a simple job actually of putting those on. The end result may not be quite as refined as bare metal foil, but also much less prone to risk as well. You won't rip any of these pieces or um, or get wrinkles in or any, anything like that. So really quite nice. That sheet also includes the uh, mirror lens for the passenger side sun visor. Very nice touch there. Looking inside again, the detail continues. The the dashboard is one piece, steering wheel and steering column. Really nothing unusual for an American car kit. There's the front bench seat there. The kit comes with the option of individual bucket seats instead of the front bench. Rear seat there is moulded as part of the chassis interior. Sorry, not the chassis, the, the, the interior tub, I should say, uh, or interior base with the uh, a separate back which enabled them to mould with a bit more detail, I assume. And then the interior sides are separate pieces there. One piece for each side. Very nice detail, including door locking pins, um, moulded in rear seat ashtrays, moulded in controls for window switches and so on. And also, if you can make it out, a clear red piece for the door courtesy lamp or warning lamp there. Very, very nicely done indeed. So all in all, the exterior detail really, really stacks up. Let's take a look under that very long hood and see what's under there. Because this is again a cut above, in my opinion, what's normally offered in a model car kit engine bay. So in here, we have the first time I've personally ever built a model which includes the air conditioning high pressure hoses and clips and so on there. We've got the obvious features like the air cleaner there and the radiator, but there's also the air conditioning condenser. Um, we've got the various air tanks. This car has air suspension or, or the real car has air suspension. So we've got the tanks and equipment for that. Here we've got the air conditioning compressor that looks like a tiny V-twin engine. Oil tanks, alternator or generator, screen wash reservoir. What I like about it is that the engine bay appears absolutely full. Just like when you open the, the bonnet or the hood of a, a real luxury car and there's just no spare space in there at all. It's all crammed full of engine and various ancillary components. I'm really impressed with that. I think it, it's a, a sort of a hidden, a hidden aspect of the model which isn't obvious when it's on display generally but really really worth completing in some detail because it really does the rest of the kit justice in my view. So there we go that is the monogram and now Revel 1959 Cadillac Eldorado convertible if you thought about trying this kit I would say don't think anymore just go and get one as soon as you find one they tend to show up online relatively inexpensive and may even be reissued uh, may be currently available for all I know I don't think it is but quite likely to be in the uh, the, the re-release catalog in future years I would have thought um, just to note also this kit does come with a uh, a hood so you can show the car with the convertible hood up and that has a glazed rear screen as well I, I didn't build that particular version I prefer it like this but it is included along with the optional bucket seats, as I mentioned earlier as well. I think in terms of options, that's about as far as it goes. Um, but overall, I thoroughly recommend this kit. Give it a try. You'll end up with a great looking model Cadillac. Thanks very much for watching.